Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Hamad Yusuf. On behalf of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa attended the award ceremony of Prime Minister Journalism Award in its fifth edition, which was held remotely. The award consists of the following categories columns, reports, interviews, and press photos. Deputy Premier Sheikh Ali bin Khalifa delivered a speech in which he expressed thanks and appreciation of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister for his patronage of the award and his support to the national press in addition to his appreciation for its role in supporting the March of Comprehensive Achievement under the leadership of His Majesty the King. يطيب لي أن أهني وأبارك للفائزين بجائزة رئيس الوزراء للصحافة في دورتها الخامسة أن هذا التكريم هو تقدير لما يقوم به أصحاب القلم والكلمة من دور مشهود في خدمة الوطن والنهوض والمجتمع والتمسك الثابت بإمانة الكلمة والاستفادة من أجواء الحرية التي كفلها المشروع الوطني لحضرة سيدي صاحب الجلالة الملك حمد بن عيسى آل خليفة ملك مملكة البحرين حفظه الله ورعاه ويسرني أن أنقل لكم تحيات صاحب السمو الملكي الأمير سلمان بن حمد آل خليفة ولي العهد رئيس مجلس الوزراء حفظه الله ورعاه واعتزاز سموه وما تقومون به من إسهامات متميزة ومن فريق البحرين وتقديرا وتقدير حفظه الله لدوركم الفاعل في دعم الجهود الوطنية التي يقودها سموه في كل المجالات متمنيا لكم وللجميع بدوام التوفير وفي هذه المناسبة نستحضر دور فقيد الوطن الكبير الوالد صاحب السمو الملكي الأمير خليفة بن سلمان آل خليفة رحمه الله وما كان يوليه سموه من اهتمام دعم العمل الصحفي والاهتمام بالصحفيين والكتاب وتكريمهم سنويا لتحفيز روح الأبداع وتقدير سموه لعطائهم المتجدد نسأل الله أن يرحم سموه ويسكنه فسيح جناته والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته in his speech, the Minister of Information Ali Ramehi expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister for his patronage of the award and his support for the freedom of opinion and responsible expression. He also expressed thanks and appreciation to the Kingdom's journalists and media figures for their efforts to further develop the Kingdom. إن الصحافة البحرينية بفضل الدعم اللامحدود من لدن صاحب الجلالة الملك المفدى ماضية في دورها الحيوي كشريك فاعل في الحفاظ على أمن الوطن واستقراره وتعديم مكتسباته وعداء واجباته ضمن فريق البحرين بقيادة صاحب السمو الملكي ولي العهد رئيس مجلس الوزراء عبر نشر الوعي بالحقائق والمعلومات الصحيحة في المجالات كافة ومن ضمنها مكافحة فيروس كورونا معاهدين جلالة الملك المفدى وسمو ولي العهد الأمين حفظهم الله على مواصلة رسالتنا التنورية في تكريس قيم المواطنة الصالحة والتسامح والوحدة الوطنية ونبذ الفرقة والكراهية وتعزيز الوعي المجتمعي والوقوف صفا واحدا في مواجهات الحملات المشبوهة والمعادية والتصدي لكل من تسول له نفسه محاولة المساس بأمننا واستقرارنا وهويتنا وعقيدتنا والعمل بروح الفريق الواحد فريق البحرين على تحويل التحديات إلى فرص واعدة وإنجازات متجددة for her part, the president of Bahrain Journalists Association, Ahdiya Ahmed, expressed pride on behalf of Bahrain's journalists and the kind patronage of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. At the end of the ceremony, the jury announced the winners of this year's Journalism Award edition. Osama Al Majid from Al Bilad newspaper won in the columns category. Saeed Mohammed Saeed from Al Bilad won the reports category. Tamam Abu Safi from Al Ayyam the interviews category. And Sultan Al Haddad from Bahrain News Agency won the press photography category.
The Speaker of the Representatives Council for the Yazena participated in the ceremony to announce the winners of the Prime Minister's Award for Journalism. She affirmed that His Majesty the King has established the foundation for freedom of speech, which is supported by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. She thanked the Minister of Information, Ali Rumehi, for developing the field in the kingdom and praised the various media outlets that have carried out their duty with professionalism. On the occasion of the announcement of the winners of the Prime Minister's Prize for Journalism, the Shura Council Chairman Ali Saleh affirmed that His Majesty the King has established all aspects of comprehensive development, including journalism and freedom of speech. He expressed appreciation for the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister for this field, as well as the role of the media in the kingdom. He congratulated the winners of the prize and said that it reflects their partnership in the process of comprehensive development. The Attorney General, Dr. Ali al sponsored virtual discussion sessions on the role of civil society in supporting the fields of juvenile justice, protecting children against abuse, and implementing alternative penalties. The sessions were attended by the Minister of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowments, Sheikh Khalid bin Ali al-Khalifa, where the participants discussed enhancing the capabilities of state institutions in applying such measures from legal and technical standpoints to realize the interests of children and protecting them from abuse. The sessions also discussed rehabilitation and training programs that are suitable for children. The Attorney General gave a talk in which he praised the legislative reforms in recent years which are intended to result in positive social effects. The Minister of Housing, Basim al Hamar, visited the pro housing project for 132 units of the Lousy Housing Project, along with various secondary infrastructure works, which represents a trial version of the housing project to develop land ownership rights. He said that the project is being achieved ahead of schedule through the efforts of the ministry and its partners in the private sector in order to provide citizens with funding and increasing the supply of housing options to citizens at reasonable prices. The ministry aims to build 27,000 housing units on government-owned land as it works to improve housing services. The Board of Trustees of King Hamad Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence held its meeting this year, chaired by the Chairman of the Board of Trustees, Sheikh Khalid bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, in the presence of the Deputy Chairman, Center Members, and Secretary General, Sumay Al Mir. The Chairman congratulated His Majesty the King on the decision of the Board of Trustees of the Moscow State University for International Relations to award His Majesty an honorary doctorate in recognition of his noble role in promoting peaceful coexistence and dialogue among various religions and cultures. The Board of approved the launch of King Hammond Medal for Peaceful Coexistence, whereby the chairman stated that it will be an exceptional medal awarded to individuals and international organizations that support the noble values adopted by the kingdom for hundreds of years. He noted that the medal will increase regional and international awareness concerning the importance of respecting religions and accepting others to achieve peace and harmony between different peoples and societies. Export Bahrain announced that support for SMEs has reached $100 million since its launch in November 2018 until June 2021. Export Bahrain contributed to the support of SMEs since the launch of the program through its export of 51 categories of products and services across 10 sectors, as well as reaching the over 55 foreign markets in the Gulf, Asia, Africa, Europe, Australia and the U.S. An implementation of the royal directives issued by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to start vaccinating Bahraini citizens residing abroad who were unable to get vaccinated and in order to preserve the health and safety of citizens and support national efforts led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. The Bahrain Embassy to the UK began implementation of a vaccination rollout for citizens abroad. The Ministries of Health and Foreign Affairs have developed action steps to put into effect the royal directives in coordination with the staff of the embassy, where a large number of Bahraini citizens are stationed to roll out the vaccination process. Ambassador Sheikh Fawaz bin Mohammed Al Khalifa praised the royal directives and its positive impact on the citizens of the kingdom in the UK, noting the coordination between the organizing team to ensure the smooth ex execution of the vaccination rollout. The vaccination period for citizens of the kingdom in the UK will continue until the 9th of this month. The embassy has called on all those wishing to receive the vaccination to register via the online portal available on the social media accounts of the embassy. 
an implementation of the royal directives issued by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to start vaccinating Bahraini citizens residing abroad who were unable to get vaccinated, and in order to preserve the health and safety of citizens and support the national efforts led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, and within the framework of the Foreign Ministry's keenness to safeguard the interests of citizens overseas, the Embassy of the Kingdom of Bahrain in Islamabad, in coordination with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, has contacted Bahraini citizens in Pakistan to make sure they have taken the COVID-19 vaccination, instructing them on the mechanisms used to register for the vaccination. It also noted that most of the citizens registered at the embassy who are currently in Pakistan have started taking the vaccine. The embassy stresses that this process is culmination of Bahrain's keenness to make every effort in order to preserve the safety of citizens by providing them with safe vaccination, noting that the Ministry of Foreign Affairs has cooperated and coordinated with the Ministry of Health and the diplomatic missions of Bahrain abroad to continue to take all measures in order to ensure the smooth execution of the vaccination process overseas. The Bahrain Oncology Center at King Hamad Hospital has acquired the commissioned the MR Linac unit, which is another step towards providing advanced radiation therapy that is unprecedented in the entire GCC region. This acquisition of technology in cancer care comes out of commitment and dedication to provide state-of-the-art and comprehensive cancer care. To speak more about this, we are joined by the director of Bahrain Oncology Center, Professor Elias Fadl. Hello, Professor Elias. Tell us about the new and revolutionary addition of equipment and services services at Bahrain Oncology Center and how can they further improve the kingdom's health care sector and deal with such costly treatments? Yes, and good evening. Uh, uh, as already known, the Bahrain Oncology Center, supported by the King Hamad University Hospital, is the, is the Bahrain National Cancer Institute with the mission of providing Bahraini nationals and citizens with a world standard comprehensive care in the domain of hematology and oncology. And allow me, allow me, please, before talking about the new machines and technology, to mention that many Bahraini care workers are sponsored to undergo advanced studies and training in internationally reputed institutions, while others are already enrolled in the valuable workforce of our center. And concerning the machine and uh, willing to keep up with the latest advances in medicine, the center launched on the 27th of June the MR Linac services as part of its state-of-the-art armamentarium in the field of radiation oncology. In fact, this machine, the MR Linac, allows what we call a personalized radiation therapy, meaning by this that each tumor will have a specially designed treatment. This is possible because this machine contains in the same time an MRI device, which is an imaging device allowing diagnostic capabilities, and a linear accelerator. And the uh, originality of this, of this machine is that the MRI keeps shooting, keeps viewing the tumor while the treatment is, giving, is given. So it's a kind of dynamic uh, way of giving a treatment. The tumor will be all the time visualized during the shooting of the tumor by the radiation. The advantage of this technique, of this technology, is when the tumor moves from its position, and we're talking about millimeters, for example, during the respiration, the machine is able by itself to follow the tumor, and if the tumor moves more than a certain number of millimeters, the machine stops shooting with the radiation therapy and resume the treatment when the tumor goes back to its target position. What does it mean? It means that you are able at every second of the treatment to give the highest concentrated radiation therapy to the tumor and at the same time you are saving, you are avoiding the irradiation of the safe tissues surrounding the tumor of the so in this way you have an improved or highest therapeutic efficacy and you have a, a major decrease in the side effects so just to mention that this machine is the seventh uh, of its kind delivered uh, by the manufacturing company Electa 
at worldwide level and it's first machine from Electa in the Middle East and the uh, uh, whole uh, continent of Africa. And added to the, uh, this machine, I would like to mention, if you allow me, uh, the growing number of patients in our center. Added to the growing cost of the anti-cancer agent, which is translating in huge constraints on our budget. Just to give you an idea, from a pre-planned 467 uh, new cancer cases diagnosed in Bahrain at the opening of the center, as by the national statistics at that time, the numbers of patients is, uh, is, are growing uh, to reach 1,300 in 2020, and we are expecting this number to increase even more in 2021. And this definitely reflects in part of it the confidence of the uh, uh, Bahrain community in the services of the center. Director of Bahrain Oncology Center, Professor Elias Fado, thank you for joining us. The Chief Executive Officer of Primary Health Care Centers, Dr. Jalila Sayed, gave a media briefing organized by the National Communications Center in cooperation with the Executive Management of Primary Health Care Centers. Dr. Sayed affirmed that the primary health care system is considered the cornerstone of health services in Bahrain and is the first point of contact for the individual with regard to health care as the system includes a number of services that aim to ensure the health of the people. She added that the project of the autonomy <laughs> strategy in primary health Healthcare centers aims to promote with principles associated with the formation of primary health system that is self-managed by the Board of Trustees and the Primary Health Directorate, in addition to providing integrated and sustainable health services that operate with fairness, efficiency, and high quality. The international vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that 1,077,727 had taken the first dose of the vaccine, while 1,008,024 had taken the second. The Ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccination. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of active coronavirus cases reached 1,659 with 287 recoveries, 128 registered new cases and 3 deaths. 72 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 51 are contacts of active cases and 5 are travel related. The Ministry expresses its heartfelt condolences to the families of the deceased and urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus.